Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're still welding with the Lincoln Power MIG 210MP, messing around with it, and I'm using straight CO2 gas today. I'm going to compare it to 7525 argon CO2. On a horizontal open butt groove weld, multi-pass, I'm going to also use that bend test fixture that I've been working on to bend some straps out of this thing. So there's a few things to know about using straight CO2 gas before we get started. Number one is the same settings that work on uh, 7525 argon CO2 do not like do not transfer right over and work good with straight CO2. It's different. So for today's video, I kept the wire feed speed the same. I just bumped up the voltage a little bit on the straight CO2. That's one thing. You need more voltage for a given wire feed speed. Another thing is textbooks say that CO2 gives you a lot of spatter and all that stuff, and that doesn't really seem to be true in, in on certain applications anyway. Uh, if you get, if you dial in your sweet spot and get your settings just right, the thing about the thing about CO2 is the sweet spot's a little narrower. It's a little harder to find. Also, once you get that sweet spot, you need a good ground because if you don't have a good ground, it wants to sputter. All right, even worse than than you know, all MIG welders need a good ground. They all do because none of them care if you lose your ground momentarily like if you if you ground off to something with paint or mill scale on it and you fire off and things are going good but then intermittently you lose your ground it's going to stub and you're going to think you need to change your wire feed speed or you're going to think you need a new liner and, and all it is is you all it is is you you don't have a good ground so it's even more important on straight co2 than it is on 75 25 gas in my opinion another thing is if you have a machine with an inductance setting you want to set it up kind of high that seems to help with the CO2 gas. Seems to help give you a nice smooth arc that wets out with very little spatter. Little, this little Lincoln 210 MP has inductance settings, and so I set it up to eight today, and it got a pretty good arc. So anyway, I'm gonna bend test some stuff using that bend test fixture that I built with this machine, and uh, we should learn something. So let's get into it. Today we're gonna be welding on some test plates from Triangle Engineering at Trieng dot com three eighths of an inch thick a 36 type material it's a horizontal position using short circuit mig and first up we're going to use 75 25 gas 75 argon 25 co2 at 18 volts 230 inches a minute that's kind of low but i want to compare and keep them kind of the same and just prove that a good looking weld isn't always a good weld and that's kind of like where we're where we're headed today root pass doesn't take much heat I've got a loose 332nd gap in there and with a feather edge, no land basically, and a 332nd gap, 2.4 millimeter gap, that's just pretty much going to go in there. Not much problem. The trick is stay on the front of the puddle without getting too far on the front of the puddle and shooting wire through. But if you can stay right on that front of the puddle, you'll get a good looking root pass, one that penetrates through, pushes through, and completely consumes the, the, uh, the shoulders. This is the second pass. I'm using just a slight push angle here, more for filming than anything else. And then coming, coming with the third pass, that pretty much fills the plate up. I'm moving a little bit slow there, but that pretty much fills it up ready for a cover pass. And I didn't, I didn't get arc shots of that, so I'm just going you know, super, super high speed here just to, just to speed things up. So that's a three pass cover pass. And now let's do the CO2, 100% CO2. The only change I'm going to make is I'm going to bump voltage up to 19 volts instead of 18 volts, keeping the wire feed speed exactly the same. It doesn't look a whole lot different. It certainly has a very smooth arc. You don't see a lot of spatter. Like I said, once you find that sweet spot, you don't have a lot of spatter with CO2, at least not on, on certain things. I wouldn't necessarily want to use it for thin sheet metal. It's got kind of a hot arc, but we'll come. We'll now weld overlap that by half with a, a pass here on the bottom toe of that weld, and then come across with a another one, filling that up, and see what that looks like. Again, I would, if I was welding this thing, trying to just pass a test, I would set this thing much hotter. And plus, I would be wanting to use 035, a larger diameter wire, at least 035 wire. Just for the sake of, of you know, current density and that kind of thing, we'll get into that later. We'll speed this up now. That's the first bead on the cover pass. 
different than the 7525, but not a whole lot different. Smooth arc, just like I said, just as you can see the puddle kind of following the arc here, you can see that's not a hot, hot puddle. At 19 volts, 230 inches a minute, again, 030 wire. I, I should have overlapped a little bit more there. I've got a little valley. Just wanted to point that out. And this is the third pass and the last pass for the cover pass. And then we got our, our plate welded out with straight CO2. Another A three pass, a three bead cover pass with straight CO2. Well, now the thing is to lay them out, lay straps out and, and cut them and bend them and see what they look like. Now, this is kind of standard. It's kind of inefficient to make that extra cut, leaving a space in the middle, but that's pretty much... That's pretty much how the American Welding Society standards have you lay a plate test out. So that's what I'm doing. Got a little Miller Spectrum 625 Extreme Plasma Cutter here, and it, it makes short work of this 3 8 plate. This is real time, not sped up here at all. Watch how fast this goes right here. It just cuts through it like butter. But I got a brand new tip, brand new orifice, and uh, I've got plenty of air pressure and dry air. That's that's what makes all the difference with plasma cutting. Now we let them cool and grind the straps, and we'll be ready to bend them here shortly. I, I put the strap in this little uh, drill press vise, easy way to hold them while I grind on them. And you want to radius the corners, and you want a nice smooth surface, and you don't want scratches running sideways. I've got them kind of running diagonally a little bit. Ideally, you'd have them running longitudinally. That, and the reason is you don't want to ask for trouble and have scratches running sideways so that they'll open up when you bend them. All right, this is the 7525 joint face bend, and uh-oh. Like I said, you didn't see all those passes go in, but... I think I know what the culprit is, and we'll show you in just a minute. That's the face bend. I bend a root bend also, and it actually turned out okay. But look at here. Between the root and that first bottom pass, that's where the problem is. Had some cold lap in there, and it just opened up and broke. Now on the bottom of this root pass, right there, we got a little notch. It's kind of, kind of uh, convex. And the way to fix that is take a grinder and kind of shave that down a little bit before making this pass. But watch the very front leading edge of this pass. It looks a little iffy, doesn't it? It looked a little iffy to me going in, but I thought, well, maybe it's getting in, maybe it's not. It's kind of cold. Definitely should be about, you know, 22 volts instead of, instead of 18. But, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to weld down toward the low, low range just to show that you know, a well that looked okay wasn't always okay and show the difference between CO2 and argon CO2. So this is the straight CO2 and they bent way better, way better. One more volt and using straight CO2 made a whole lot of difference. But I don't want you to think these are all that perfect because when we turn it over sideways like we looked at the other one, we see a little hint of the same problem there. Just a little lack of fusion there between the root and that first pass over the root and so now we're going to go back and do an autopsy on that one and look at it we got the same thing there a slightly convex bead it's kind of like a, there's a little notch in there possibly some cold lap and then there's islands of silicon that need to be removed out of there and this is what the first bead looked like going in there kind of cold looking like is it is it getting in there is it burning in is it not well not good enough so some of the points I want to make here today is one, straight CO2 gas is an option, especially if you have an inverter power source with an inductance setting. Number two is you need to weld on up toward the high range of short circuit transfer. Very easy to get cold lap with short circuit transfer, so you need to be on up to the high range, not the low range. I was way on the low range today, and even with the straight CO2 gas, got a little bit of cold lap. Well, hey, thanks for watching. I always appreciate your time. I know you're busy like I am. Check out the featured products on the Weldmonger store at weldmonger.com. We'll see you next time.